Salutations, leaders of tomorrow. Professor Inkwell here, and welcome back to my drawing room, the sanctuary for your imagination. I'm so glad you've decided to join me today, because today we're going to be experimenting a little bit with Experiment 626, or better known as Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. And if you'd like to follow along at home, you only need a few supplies to get started. A piece of paper, a writing utensil, and something to color with. Now let's get started. Well, boys and girls, it certainly is great to be back in my drawing room. My word, those last three months of raising the Titanic really took it out of me. Let's hope my drawing skills didn't get rusty. That's why it's so important to draw something every single day, even if it's a little doodle, because that's how you're going to get better. Now, today I'm going to be using my Sharpie, but once again, boys and girls, you can use whatever writing utensil you'd like. You can use a colored pencil, a crayon, a marker, whatever you'd like. Just make sure, if you're using a Sharpie, Put some paper underneath the paper you're drawing on so it doesn't bleed onto the table. Now today we're going to be drawing Stitch, but we're not going to draw his whole body. We're going to draw him peeking over a little wall. Now the first step in drawing Stitch is we're going to draw his head. His head is going to take about, much, about this much space here. Now we're going to start by drawing the bottom of his head first. His head is a very interesting shape. It's not really a perfect circle, so near the bottom of the page, right about here, we're going to draw a very elongated, stretched out letter U. Kind of like this, very stretched out near the bottom. And then we're gonna draw a very large upside down letter U, but we're going to stop in the middle. We're gonna leave a space near the top. We're not gonna connect it all the way through and I'll explain why in just a bit. So start right here and go ahead and pretend like you're drawing an upside down letter U, but stop near the middle. And then leave a little bit of space at the top and then just bring the rest down like this. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. Now for this space, we're gonna draw three little V's to represent the fuzz on his head. So right about here, go ahead and draw three curved letter V's, just like that to represent some fur on top of his head. Let's go ahead and draw his big nose. Now, his nose isn't a perfect circle either, so I'd say right about here, go ahead and draw a letter U, just like that. And then we'll connect it on both sides with another upside down letter U, just like that. And if you want, you can go ahead and draw very two small little nostrils on his nose. You can barely see them. And on either side, we're going to draw his eyes. They're just simple ovals, but they're slightly slanted. They're almost like tip it that way a little bit. So let's go ahead and draw two big ovals. One on that side. And one on that side. And if you want, you can draw two circles near the top to represent some highlights. And then you can always color it in if you like. And remember, boys and girls, you can always pause the video if I'm going too fast if you need to catch up. And at the very top here, we're gonna draw two upside down letter U's to represent his eyebrows. We're not gonna draw it all the way down. We're gonna use colored pencils to fill that in later. Let's go ahead and give him a nice big smile right about here. Draw a little line here and another one like that. Now you can give him a curved mouth if you'd like, but I'm gonna give him a little bit of a muzzle. So right about here, I'm gonna bring it down, go up slightly, bring it down and then back up like that. So it's just a little bit curved to represent like a little bit of a muzzle almost. Now you can add some teeth, you can add a tongue, you can make him blepping. I think I'll do that, I'll add a nice, Cute little tongue upside down you and just a line down the middle and maybe a couple of letter V's to represent his teeth. Now his nose is a little bit scrunched so to represent that just draw a couple little lines right above there like that. Let's go ahead and draw his shoulders. I'd say right about at this tooth right here go ahead and draw just a curved line like this and at this tooth another little curved line like that to represent his shoulders. Now he's missing something, isn't he? He's missing his ears. Let's go ahead and draw those right now. So right at the bottom of the mouth, draw a little tick line right there and another little tick line right there. That's, this is just gonna help us map out where the bottom of the ear is gonna go. And let's draw another little dot right there. I don't know if you can see that. And another dot right there to help us guide us where the top of the ear is gonna be. So right about here, we'll just draw a slanted line like that. And we'll keep it going. And we'll stop right about there. Let's 
go ahead and draw a sideways letter V to represent a little tear in his ear. And then we'll just bring it down all the way back like that. Let's go ahead and draw the top side of his ear. Right about here, doesn't have to be perfect. Just draw a curved line to represent the little fold in his ear. And then again at the bottom, right where we made that line, so it looks like the fold's going into his ear. It is, so it looks like the fold is going into his head. And then we'll just do the same thing on this side. We'll go ahead and bring it all the way up. And then we'll just bring this line all the way down. And we'll stop right about there. Do a little sideways V for another little tear in his ear. And then just bring it in like that. And then we'll draw another curved line from here to there to represent the top fold of his ear going into his head. And again at the bottom, just like that. Now, I mentioned earlier that he's going to be peeking over the side of a wall. So from here to here, we're just going to draw a straight line and stop right about there. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Just two straight lines. And then right here, we're going to draw an upside down letter U and then just bring it in and stop right about there. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Upside down U, stop right there. Those are his little paws and then just finish the line of the wall right there in the middle. And then of course you can do three letter V's to add his little claws on his paws, just like that. And you can do a couple of zigzaggy lines to add some fur on his chest. Very simple. And now it's my favorite part of the drawing session. We get to color them in. Now Stitch is very simple to color. All you need is three different colors. You need dark blue, a light blue, and pink for the ears and his tongue. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. I use pink for the inside of his ears and his tongue, and then dark blue for the outer part of his fur, and then I use light blue to go around his eyes, underneath his mouth, and on his tummy, like that, for the lighter part of the fur. And I also forgot that you can use a dark gray or a dark blue for his nose, right there in the middle. And I added just a little hard, but you can add whatever you'd like. And the most important part of your masterpiece is, of course, your signature. And just like that, you have created Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Now, don't forget everyone, if there's something that you would like to learn how to draw in the future, leave a comment below. I would love to know what you would like to draw. Now, if you had as much fun as I did today, go ahead and click that like button. Oh, and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe as well and join the rest of the students. Well, everyone, this concludes another tutorial in my drawing room. Now, go spend some time with your Ohana. Aloha! Uh, well, Professor Inkwell already said what I was about to say, so I guess I have nothing to say. Yep, that's it. Okay, bye.